You know, people will spend more money on their animals than they will on their own health. Who agrees with that? Isn't that, isn't that true? And I'll tell you, um, I've had some great experience with animals over my lifetime, and, and Dr. Crow is going to share. Come on here, Dr. Crow, because when that happened, I consulted this guy, Dr. Crow, and uh, what a magnificent person and what the best vet in the world. So we're going we're gonna to turn it over to you for a second. And so I better just get on to it here. Uh, but seriously, uh, I'm a part of the Institute of Health Management and Mass Destruction Defense. That's a lot to do with disaster. And I am pleased to report that the Kangan Water Unit is actually published in two uh, unit uh, articles uh, related to disaster management with when we're going to need water. And uh, it's very powerful. And uh, I'm with, again, the College of Public Health, the University of Georgia. Uh, but, and I'm just kind of on the fringe of it, though, because most of my spend my time as chief of surgery there in critical care, and uh, that's in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then I'm with the, as the medical director for hyperbaric oxygen here in Florida. And then uh, I'm a captain with fire safety officer uh, with my Oconee County Fire. And so I kind of play all these hats. And do I get dehydrated sometimes? Many investigations have been done with water. And water makes up, and I cross that out, we used to say 65 to 85 percent of our body is associated with water. When Gerald Pollack and I were getting together and him talking about it, and him, I just realized, and he realized this, he's a water scientist, he said, no, Tim, we're like more to over 90 plus percent water, 95 in muscle, and that's because all of the interactions with all the other molecules are related to water. So that's not maybe we're not just, you know, I mean, with bone and tissues and all forth. And he talks about the fourth phase of water, what was Dr. McKnight was talking about earlier, the crystalline water, the hydrogel water. And it's like the light transfers better, and the protons transfer better, 40 times faster, as he mentioned. And the layers are, enzymes is not a substrate and an enzyme, it's that there's about 10 layers of water between an enzyme and the substrate. Didn't know that. You know, when we go to vet school, med school, and all that, we think about all this stuff about interaction with enzymes and substrates. Well, now we know it's water-related. And that the better the water, the better off we're going to have a transfer. And so the water molecules are important because of the channels that are important for them. I spend a lot of my time in the operating room. Uh, this is at the Regional Institute of Veterinary Emergencies and Referrals, caring for sick animals and injured pets 24-7. That's how I really got involved with the water. I have a dear friend, his name is Dr. Ray Stewart, but he's the guy that got me started. He's the chiropractor, he got me going in the water, said, Tim, I think you'll like this water, and then with another friend, uh, doctor, another doctor that's a veterinarian, that he, he got me going. And that was about three and a half years ago. And you know, pets and owners are just such a bond. And here's a lady bringing in her older, dog who is around 15 years old and she he she's got degenerative diseases and arthritis and we're using a little loop right here that little targeted loop is to help us with with pain and uh, it sends out a signal but if the patient's dehydrated then that signal is going to get through just like with the water transfer of light through water and so she's happier because her little beagle now is working along with the loop and getting better with the hydration with the with the uh, two with the 11.5 water that's used for a soak around that leg, and then also the, the water that she's on is 9.5. Pets, most all pets, can handle, again, the 9.5, but you gotta go a little slower with them sometimes. Uh, remember, they have a metabolic rate that is at least seven times faster than ours. And when you send home an owner with the water for their pet, and this is what I've seen so often, the pet starts to act better faster, and they start running around quicker, like this little, little beagle. Isn't she cute, you know? And then the owner, she says, wow, my beagle is running around like he's now, he's, uh, that, he's old, but now he's running around like he's much younger. That's the first thing I usually hear, almost on a daily basis in the practice where we are, and I see that all the time. And uh, just remember this when it comes to the cells. The physiology is the same as a human cell or an animal cell. Even the animal cell, those moving faster. The metabolic rates are quicker. We have about 10 trillion cells per 10 kilograms of body weight. So most of us here are probably got 70 trillion cells 
in our body. And one million molecular changes occur per cell per second. Think about that. Every cell has a million molecular changes that occur every second. And there's this all about then these radicals that are formed when there's a lack of oxygen. And there's chronically a lack of oxygen. We're not as efficient as a machine. And then we have acidosis, where the buildup of acid, like you talk about lactic acid for the, you know, us that are working hard, uh, but at the same time it happens with all of us, we get acidemic. And we get all the inflama at least inflammation, toxic and aging. And you've heard this story before about how it's linked to cancer. Pets have, again, the 7 to 10 percent, 10 times faster metabolic rate. So they get cancer quicker. They actually then respond quicker on the other end. So if you can save their cells, they're a sentinel for human disease. And we see 60 times more cancer in our pets. Let's say let one, one may be malignant tumors like mass and breast cancer. And so that really is an, an important area that we can help our pets stay better, stay healthier longer, and if we can get them on the water quicker. And again, that means that we have seven to 10 times more cancer. In some, most cancers, it's at least seven to 10 times more cancer. They're closer to the ground. They're smelling the ground. Uh, they're taking up all the, the toxic materials that are in the ground, as well as, of course, the water. Pets and water consumption, I have to talk about that. They can smell the chlorine in the water. Chlorine, when you touch it with a little protein in the mouth, it turns to chloroform or a branch of trichloromethane. That causes cancer. That happens with anything that's chlorinated. Leads to dehydration. These pets can smell that. And I've uh, had a blessing to reach out and meet a lot of you over the course of the last you know, 48 hours. And I had one lady, I don't remember her name, but she said, my cat's drinking twice as much water as it used to. And she said, is that okay? I said, absolutely. That meant he was really dehydrated before drinking the course of tap water. Leads to less blood flow, leads to less oxygenation, leads to chronic cell changes, leads to increase in the reactive oxidant species, more of a uh, scientific name for the reactive oxygen species is certainly the superoxide radicals. And then the scavenging is done, of course, with the water. And that leads to inflammation. And here's a dog that has a ruptured disc. And that disc is up there because it's a dehydrated disc. It's not like a moving disc like it used to. And here's a dog. His name is Samson. That was his uh, CT scan. And he came in uh, obese with abdominal pain, and initially he didn't arrive, uh, just a pain from the referring vet, but he wasn't quite sure about his back. By the time he got to us, he was paralyzed. The discs rupture into the cord area, and then he is paralyzed in the rear legs, he can't walk. Well, as you can imagine, he's, something else is gonna have to be done besides just giving him, you know, electrolyzed, reduced water, Kangen water, but, in the beginning of his therapy, he starts on the antioxidants we know about. And so here's that CT scan, a little bit bigger up so you can see it a little better. There's the disc. Here's this cord pushed way up. Here's the medema all the way around here. And then the, what we do with this is a, just a model to show what we do is take a, a piece of uh, bone out and we then re give the cord a lot of room to breathe, if you will, and remove the disc material. So here we are, we're doing the surgery, and I always ask, what can I always do to improve my outcome with my patients? And when it comes to post-operatively, we want to hydrate them. And I can't tell you enough how important it is for the water first. Yeah, of course, the food's next, the nutrition, and then the pain control, and, and that leads to electrolyzed, reduced water. And here we are going home. We're starting to walk a little better. Notice the owner has a... But uh, it's, it, it, and he's getting the machine and the water, and he's taking home the water, and he's taking home, he's happier, and he's getting some gallons of jugs to go home with him, and the dog's happy, and I'm pleased to report he made a full recovery. Okay, made a full recovery. 
And we, we also use another tool, it's called hyperbaric oxygen, and we put the patient in the chamber and it reoxygenates the cord as well. But it also produces reactive oxygen species, those superoxide radicals we talk about. And here is the relect electrolyzed, electrolyzed reduced water. You have to talk about it as a scientific term is electrolyzed reduced water. Uh, the water is used as a oxygen, reactive oxygen species scavenger. We're always economical in veterinary medicine. What's the best thing I can do economically for my patients is put them on the water. All right. So we got a happy owner, and we got a, certainly a happy surgeon because he's got the water. And guess what? I start to go drink the water right away coming out of that operating room. Okay. We have general guidelines we want to actually bring to you. And that is you start with 8.5. And that's because most animals are somewhat toxic. And some, if you start them right away on 9.5, we see a diarrhea. Not all the time, but boy, in somebody's house, you don't want that dog to run around with diarrhea all over it. So it spoils the whole situation. So you go, <laughs> yeah. and so you always do this. You place and use glass or ceramic. Actually, metal bowls are probably not the best either because we take actually electromagnetic radiation. It's not all good radiation, it's microwave. Some of it's microwave radiation, and it goes into the bowl and it acts like a radar dish. So go back to utilizing things that are glass or ceramic. Then change to 9.5, and then go to nine, after you go to 9.5 for nine a week, then 9.5 for a week. If they stop and they start to feel a little bit like a little diarrhea comes on or something, stay right there and don't move it. Go back to where you were. And those with cancer and severe inflammatory disease will add a little tiny bit of 11.5 uh, in a kilogram basis, you know, we're using like a one ounce for 10 kilograms. That's not very much. Uh, and of course, if they're using the jugs and taking them home, the so it's really important to get them on fresh Kangen water as soon as possible because it provides that free hydrogen-based electrons. And so you could do some energy testing with that. We don't have time to work into that as well today, but we just can imagine that water essentially is a vibra vibration medicine. It's a vibrating structure. And so as you just test for it, you can do that. And so some of us that are doing in the biophysics side of medicine, you can test to see which water to start them on. And here's Milton. Milton's a 20, lived through 20 years of age with two years of chronic kidney disease. And Grace, the owner, she said, I, I started the dog, the kitty on the water, and uh, the kitty's starting to run around like a 10-year-old. She calls me up and says that. Dr. Crow, you won't believe it, but my little cat that you started on the water, he's running around and jumping up on the couch and doing all those things they never used to do since he's been 10. Now he's 18. Well, he lived two more years. Yeah, yeah, two more years. Happy years. And so we see these con clinic, common clinical conditions. They don't have a placebo effect. There's nothing else that will make them work. So it's, got, it's, it's very, very important. That the chronic renal failure, the chronic liver disease, the uh, uh, mammary gland carcinoma, you know, these are tumors, prostate disease, degenerative joint diseases, asthma, pneumonia, heart disease, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, big disease that has to do with fighting and breaking down the red cells, degenerative disc disease, like we showed with Samson. Some of those animals, when you first early get the diagnosis and you put them on the Kangen water, they don't need to have and rupture their discs. They rehydrate. And then they start feeling a lot better. And then they don't come to have to come to me. And the common clinical conditions, like we see so many animals that still get hit by a car. And they got bumps and bruises, of course, so they may have something else. Snake bite, uh, you know, and we see burns. Uh, the burn patients do very well with the pain. You know how important a burn is for pain. To help take care of the pain, we put 11.5 on the water. And I say from doc, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Horst, you know, my friend Horst, he's talking about also, Horst Belter talks about using 11.5 on the burns as well for humans. And then foreign bodies, we remove them. You know, dental and ear diseases are common, and bowel disease and eye and conjunctival infections. And it brings me to Maggie. This is Brian Welch's little kitty. Isn't she cute? Even at a... Uh, a couple, you know, 10 days old or so, she's got uh, eyes that are just barely getting open because he was able to use the 2.5 water to get their, the eyes open. I guess the, one of her, his friends found the little kitty alongside the road. 
And of course, the nose was all kinked up with a lot of pus. And the kitty, kitty was, I won't show you the other end because it was even worse looking, but they had maggots all the way through that cat. Very toxic, very toxic. So squirting that 2.5 water up into those maggot holes made it really, those maggots just come out, uh, the, the infection that's involved. Remember, there's no bacteria, no virus, you know, no, nothing like that that actually withstands 2.5 water. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So here's Maggie. Isn't she cute with her eyes open and doing well? Brian, thank you for uh, sharing that with us. And of course, we, we know that true joy and happiness comes when we can really help our little animals like that. <laughs> and you can see, who is the happiest? I don't know. I think they're both very, very, very happy, you know. And let's look at what's going on with her at this point. Uh, sorry about that. I guess that picture didn't show up. Well, we'll go on. But Maggie has got some other thing related to potentially an eye situation in which I just told Brian to go ahead and start soaking the eye area with 11.5 to get the antioxidant available into that tissue because it could be still left over from a meibomian gland that is stuck and it's got a little swelling there. So he's going to go for that. We see severe wounds. I mean, I had to show you some bad wound. I'm a surgeon, okay? Sorry. All right, I know it looks ugly. And we see severe wounds. The first thing you do as a pet owner is to, of course, said, cover that wound. It's bad bacteria. There could be MRSA methicillin resistant a staph that we get and we also see severe contamination severe infection leads from that contamination we see shock dehydration can you think of things you can use out of your machine for that absolutely right okay we're going to quote low the, the ox, electrolyzed oxidized water low ph 2.5 nano clustered or essentially it is you know declustered and that is gets the uh, water into the tissues to help rehydrate. And we know that infection is related to dehydrated tissues. So you're gonna rehydrate the tissues, use something that's gonna kill the bacteria. Stop the bleeding, put some pressure on it, and then use the, you know, an acupuncture point of LI11 right here in the arm. It's very good for animals. Any kind of critical ill crisis situation, LI11 right here, it helps calm them. And then, uh, then also Governor Vessel 26 for, for resuscitation. You know, and that helps there. And then the anesthesia, and of course, in the surgery that we do. And this, of course, we're getting pre prepped up in surgery to do a, a bad wound case. Because remember, again, electrolyzed, oxidized water, the scientific term of what you're using, which is the low pH, the 2.5 water, is kills viruses, kills bacteria, kills fungus. It's used for irrigation, so there'll be a severe wound. Like the, isn't that wound better now? Remember that wound? Yes, we had to do a flap and irrigate all out, and it's, but that's all we got left, and that was just taken this last week. All right. These wounds just amazingly do so much better. And then we use it also in the dentistry uh, for oral infections, for the bad burns we talked about. In the burn situation, the burn wound is infected. We use the 2.5. Then follow it with the 11.5. On traumatic wounds, same thing. Again, we do the same thing. Use infected wounds again and follow it again with 11.5. And so head injuries, I have to tell a little bit about that. Hydration plays such a big role in head injuries. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us veterinarians, we learn to give fluids and fluids and fluids makes the brain a little more swollen, swollen, swollen. So we need to be able to, of course, do things to help. Is the oxygen going into the patient? We're watching his pulse oximetry. That's something we use for oxygen to monitor, monitor oxygen levels. And it's really interesting when we start trickling in water on some of these patients, how their oxygen levels, you can measure, and they're going up. It's like blood pressure going down because they got more flow. You see the oxygenation going up. And then here's what a little dog, his name is Sally. Her name is Sally. And she had half of her face almost removed uh, by a, 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 a machine, a farm machinery. Just take off half of her face. But she's the happiest little pup because, again, we use 11.5 after we use the 2.5. And we did that frequently. And she's just the happiest little girl. She just has one part of her nose, but she doesn't know that. She's just the happiest little girl all together around. And then they, there, here's a little, just a wound. A simple little wound can turn into a bad thing. So a little itching, whatever, a little bit of a inflammation in the skin. Start with 2.5, uh, apply the 11.5, then go back to 6.5. Or 
to 8.5, somewhere in there, depending on, and then drinking to 9.5, and do that frequently. So here's Franklin. He was in for a knee surgery. Find out with biophysics, he's allergic to a couple of things like corn and wheat. Can we get him off of those? And get, do you think this lady is very intense about getting the water for her dog? Yeah. And it helped his arthritis as well. And that dog is moving so well. I just saw him last week. And he's doing so good. Again. And then she starts drinking the water too. All right. Obesity is a killer for us in animal vet medicine as well. We see so many animals. 70% of some practices have pets that are overweight. Just overweight. This is a dachshund that weighs 60 pounds. And yeah, almost unheard of. The dog couldn't hardly walk and had ruptured a ligament in the knee, and the other knee was also bad. So what do we do with those now? Because we know that fat is pro-inflammatory. It really injures a lot of musculoskeletal tissue. It's hard on the heart, and of course we know it's pro-inflammatory with all those fat cells that are carrying on the inflammation. It's like having, you know, I'm a firefighter, so if I look at a little tiny fire, you know, it's a little tiny build thing on fire, great. That's not too bad, we hose, that's it. But you get these kind with get inflammation in them, and it's like a big, huge forest fire. So it's really important to get them on the weight reduction programs, uh, and along with their food, just to kind of decrease it, of course. And then we always have them on 9.5 water, and they continue with that as well. So, so journal Biomed Center, and of course it was published, Neuroprotective Effects of Electrolyzed Reduced Water, and it's model for water containing, again, mo molecular hydrogen, and it has uh, the uh, platinum that's m monoparticle platinum. That's why it's really stabilizing those electrons. So this was published out of a university called, again, uh, Kishu, uh, Kishu University out of Fukuoka, Japan, and the experiment involved neurotesting, of course, these mice under oxidative stress and they found that it was a, a scavenger. It's an intracellular scavenger of reactive oxygen species. It did that. It was a neuroprotective effect. Uh, profound. So in summary, we have, some, we have a tool. You have a tool. It's probably one of the most profound tools, I think, that the whole earth, the whole world has. And you are all pioneers and be able to present this to anyone who has a pet. Okay, they love them. You know, anything that is their loving and by them showing them the love by giving them the water and then they see the difference. It's amazing. So we see many pet diseases are associated with dehydration. We see that it's a very effective hydrator with 99% of all our molecular structure in our body containing or associated with water. It's just the way it is. And because of the unique hexagonal, if you will, nanostructuring that we see, nanoclustering, the most like a hydrogel water, because it is a free electron donor as well, it consumes, it's a, it consumes our reactive oxygen species, essentially. And it's because the pets have a faster metabolism and a shorter life, and they are a sentinel for us all. Would we then show the difference with electrolyzed reduced water with the Kangen water?